Welcome, folks. Tommy O'Brien filling in for my dad, Tom. He's out today, uh, and we got a market in negative territory. Jacob Shoup, he'll be joining us at 30 past the hour. We pick things up, that jobs number. Boy, you talk about a moving yield. As I talked about on the 3 o'clock update there, we have the yield curve disinverting as you have the two-year pulling back to a degree that actually falls under the 10-year. They're both sitting at about 37 seven percent right now the 10 and the two uh we'll get into that but the market pairing some of the gains what is interesting right is how the market if that truly is and let's just jump over to the jobs number because that's what's driving a lot of the action so far this morning okay the jobs number in terms of job openings 7.67 million well there's one way to put that is there's over seven and a half million jobs opening you want one they're out there right now but guess what the estimate was above eight million layoffs rising to 1.76 million the highest level since march of 2023 you take a look at this number on the top here level of job openings above 12 million at one point remember that inflation was soaring uh more jobs than anybody could imagine wages rising across the board the quit rate through the roof because people would quit knowing they could come into another job everything was that strong but nonetheless the level of job openings back to early 2000 2021 as we approach 7 million okay so indicative of a pretty tight labor market there that um yeah and then you have layoffs on a shorter term basis upticking right not quite as intact as the trend we have in terms of the job openings but that is quite a trend coming into the friday number that we have and yeah, so decreased to 7.67 million from a downwardly revised 7.9 million reading in the prior month. Now, I mention that because what happens? Well, you have the number of layoffs numbers in there as well. That's the highest since March of 2023. I mentioned the quit rate. The quit rate edged up to 2.1%, but still, still near the lowest since 2000. People are less confident in their ability to find a new position, as they put it in this article, right, than they were a couple years ago. So people aren't as comfortable quitting right now. There's something going on in this labor market. Whether the Fed is just going to be on time or they're going to be late to the party. Vacancies per unemployed worker, the ratio the Fed watches, 1.1. So again, vacancies per unemployed worker at about 1.1. It was at 2 to 1. Yes, the lowest in three years. So the labor market is tightening, to say the least. Uh, I talked about on the program this morning, right? Some of the companies out with earnings. You check in Dollar Tree. I was talking about this morning. Continues to trade lower, down 24%. And really, this earnings cycle is much worse than 24% for Dollar Tree because that's already factoring factoring in the $10 hit they took last week when Dollar General came out with their numbers, okay, kind of tipping what was going to happen for Dollar Tree at the lower echelons right now, it is a problem. And then you talk about something like a firm, buy now, pay later, as they accelerate on their earnings. But nonetheless, back to the jobs number. Yes, so what happens? Well, the market says, man, this Fed is going to have to cut. Now we jump around for the yield curve. I think this is the one they talk about what's priced in. Yes, here it is. So traders boost bets on jumbo September U.S. interest rate cut. What's implied right now, market implied pricing for September, 33.4 basis points. So what? Slightly less than a 50-50 shot that maybe they go to 50 basis points versus 25. By November, though, they're looking for two cuts somewhere in the next two meetings, right? Two cuts and one cut. They're going to go one, then they're going to force maybe to be two by the time they see all the November data. You get out to December, and you're talking about more than four cuts priced in over the next three meetings. Now, you could make the case that that was correct, that the market is picking up on the fact that the Fed's a little late to the party. The strains on this economy are tight. They're going to have to cut. They're going to have to cut a little bit more aggressively than they've indicated already. We're seeing yield spike. We're seeing the 10-year spike lower, that is. Um, we're seeing the 10-year at 3.77. We're seeing the two-year at 3.77. The two-year down 12 basis points today, okay, when I was mentioning that one. Now, I just told you how far they think rates are coming down by in December, right? And think about it. You can get right now in a money market account until September 18th when the Fed meets. They're going to give you like five and a quarter percent right now, okay? I'm ballparking. Don't quote me on that. But the point being, the overnight lending rate right now is still five and a quarter to five point five percent. And they're only and the one year treasury right now is trading under four and a quarter percent. If the market is correct, 
that rates are going to have to come down quicker than the Fed has indicated as of now, then where should the market be? Right? If this is the type of move that those cuts are going to be needed that aggressively, this data is reiterating okay, that the market is pricing in. We jump over to the CME FedWatch tool, which I enjoy sometimes. I would say not the holy grail, but it is an indication of where the market is pricing certain cuts for each meeting. September, they're looking at about a 55% chance. They go 25 basis points all the way up to a 45% chance. Look at where it was a day ago. It was as high as 62% chance they were thinking it was going to be 25 basis points. So the odds of a 50 basis point cut rising in the September meeting. But look at December even, right? December, you're talking about the odds that we are by December at four to four and a quarter percent is now 35.7%. Folks, that's, that's the equivalent of five cuts. By December if the Fed sees data that we need to cut five times by December okay I would be hard-pressed to see the S&P trading probably anywhere near 5500 as in there is going to be some indications that there is a problem jobs are getting lost they're not getting created we'll see what happens on Friday but it strikes me that the market reaction yeah we're 45 points off of the high okay but we're right where we were well, we're a little bit under. We're 20 points under where we were trading at 10 o'clock when that data came out. All right? And meanwhile, we have a mammoth move going on in yields. We jump over to the dollar index. Now, what do we have? We have lower yield. What's that doing? That's weakening the dollar index. And also, surprisingly, we haven't seen the huge reaction in gold that you could. Yes, we've seen a run-up. But there's your data at 10 o'clock. We've only jumped up $7 in gold. Meanwhile, look at the move that we found in the dollar index. Right? So we get some interesting action in terms of not everything reacting the way that you may anticipate right out of the bat, right out of the gate, I should say, right off the bat. When you got a move like this in the dollar from 101.80 down to almost 101.20 and gold only up a few dollars, but yields spiking lower, we have a disinversion of the yield curve. Four points, 45 minutes left to go in the trading day. 